Hillary a rapidly growing threat to Baja California on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for August 17th. So lots of tropical storms active right now but no hurricane equivalent systems anymore has been the case for a couple of days now. Uh, Fernando right down to tropical storm status and Hillary is on the up, probably will become a hurricane in the course of the next 24 hours. Code orange for that storm, we're quite concerned. Day 78 of Atlantic hurricane season and we do have two areas of moderate chances right now, 50% in the central Atlantic and a 40% chance just emerging off the coast of Africa near Cape Verde. Both of these systems could develop into tropical storms. In the eastern Pacific, these three tropical storms that are already active, Greg and Fernanda just holding on really, gradually moving westwards, but Hillary has a much brighter future and could be a significant impacting storm for Baja California and maybe beyond. In the Western Pacific, we've got two has-beens, Xlan, now an extratropical storm, but still looking interesting, and remnants of Dora, which are almost untraceable at this point now, and an area of interest that has a 10% chance in the next seven days in the northern uh, part of the uh, Pacific Ocean. Indian Ocean looking fairly quiet, but quite a lot of monsoonal activity going on over the Bay of Bengal and across eastern India there and for parts of Bangladesh. So let's take a look at Hillary then. Here's its current position. It's 572 kilometers from Zihuatanejo in Mexico, 644 from Manzanillo, 819 from Puerto Vallarta, 1207 from Cabo San Lucas and 2510 from San Diego. It sounds like a long di distance at the moment, but the National Hurricane Center expect that it will be a transitioning system turning post-tropical by the time it reaches Southern California in what could be um, a event that we've not seen for many decades, a potential, uh, if not a tropical storm landfall, certainly a powerful storm possibly for Southern California. And here is Fernanda right now. Uh, it is 2,085 kilometers from San Diego, 2,810 from Hilo, 2,964 from Kahului, 3,111 from Honolulu, and 3,269 from Lihue. Uh, this system is likely to gradually weaken 50 miles per hour right now, but indications show that its remnants could track close to the Hawaiian Islands in the course of the next uh, five to seven or eight days. Let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery then. Of course, first of all, we will look at Hillary, a large system, and look at that really well executed with its banding. Uh, it's getting that shrimp structure, which lots of people refer to it as, as a hallmark of a intensifying system, potentially rapidly intensifying, or maybe that rapid intensification could be on its way. Part of an eye forming maybe on that satellite imagery, who knows? Uh, but certainly looking good on its southern side with very high cloud tops. Northern side a little bit dry right now, but it looks like it should overcome that. Here's what's left of land. It's still got a decent circulation to be fair, but it's long gone from tropical status now. It is brushing to the northwest of uh, Hokkaido at this point with some more interesting cloud cover over eastern Russia there. And this is Fernanda, uh, bearing in mind how strong it was yesterday, I think it was still a Category 2, the day before it was uh, just coming off a Category 4 peak, well now there's very little left of it at all, 50 miles per hour might be a bit generous, uh, but gradually moving westwards, still got some convection there, enough to call it a tropical storm. And here's Greg, also not looking so hot, um, partially exposed circulation again is passing to the south of Hawaii quite safely, maybe slightly closer than, it, than, than Dora did. Uh, and you can see there some convection pulsating on the northern side of it, uh, looking decent still for 45 mile per hour winds right now as it gradually continues westwards. Sea surface temperatures are still very warm off the coast of Mexico where Hillary is right now, at least 28 degrees and probably more than that, 30 plus in one or two spots, all the way up to the central part of Baja California Peninsula, 26 degrees Celsius extend. 
uh, in the Atlantic, extremely warm in the Gulf of Mexico still, pushing above 32 degrees Celsius in one or two spots, and also off the Bahamas, very warm up the Gulf Stream and out over the open ocean as well. Uh, Caribbean Sea also looking very good, but the Central Atlantic there, only mediocre, 27, maybe 28 degrees. Western Pacific looking very good at the lower latitudes, a little bit higher up, there's a, a few uh, pockets of cooler temperatures caused by recent typhoons, but in general, conditions are looking very good for quite a distance there over a large part of that western pacific basin bay of bengal you can see is looking okay uh, pushing close to 30 degrees celsius in a few spots and the arabian sea not so much but it will come on stronger later on this year southwest indian ocean uh, quite cool of course well into its off season now the australian region in a similar vein very cool conditions there in terms of sea surface temperatures falling to about 20 degrees even uh, halfway up um, Queensland and in the South Pacific pretty much the same as what we were looking at yesterday quite cool there Western Pacific in terms of anomalies from the average it's a fairly average overall one or two hot spots there but a few cool areas too Eastern Pacific a similar story but on a much broader scenario and more extreme as well much cooler in the Central Pacific but much warmer compared to average in the Eastern Pacific particularly where Hillary is tracking so that's a serious concern Gulf of Mexico well above average around three degrees above and the Eastern Atlantic also a spot there a hot spot uh, and looking at oceanic heat content extreme value still in the Caribbean Sea maybe not quite as much as yesterday but still very high amounts lots and lots of energy there that can be used Eastern Pacific a few good spots there off the coast of Mexico Westpac a large trail there extending through the Philippine Sea out towards Micronesia and recovering further north after those typhoons computer models then this is the GFS moving out to the next five days it's just one of many models so I wouldn't put full faith in this it's just the only one that we have our graphics for and it depicts those two systems both of them forming at various points during the next five days the one to the north a much larger system the one to the south looks like it's struggling there which is completely opposite to what the model was saying yesterday by the way so that's why there's a lot of uncertainty right now and they've both been given moderate chances and I think that's a good call, uh, but the southern one always tends to be the favoured one. So here's Hillary there, uh, its size compared to Fernanda, much larger, and there it is moving up, uh, really producing very strong winds, getting to category 3 status there according to the forecast, and then a hurricane landfall in the central Baja California Peninsula, and look where it goes after that, it still contains tropical storm force winds uh, as it moves up through northern uh, Baja California and then into the state of California in the United States there, and of course impacting some really massive um, metropolitan areas San Diego and Los Angeles could receive gale force conditions there according to that model. Here is the Central Pacific so Greg and uh, Fernanda there, there's Fernanda, the remnants of it by this point, getting close to the Hawaiian Islands, uh, possibly influencing some winds there. Um, so two systems uh, that will be continuing through the Central Pacific, uh, and that's another one chalked up for the Central Pacific there, uh, if Fernanda makes it that far, but yet no Hone. Looking at precipitation values then for, the, for Hillary, for the coast of Baja California and beyond, uh, once again, we're looking at significant rainfall amounts both from its central core and from banding to its east which will probably have a secondary source of large rainfall amounts but as we zoom into all of this in a minute you'll take a look at all of what's going on around the whole region there the southern tip of Baja California nine inches further north 11 or 12 inches and into California Southern California there over 10 inches possible 250 millimeters um, so it could be a very wet storm certainly a large large potential for flash flooding landslides and obviously uh, buildings being swept away certainly a uh, major danger of that uh, as we look towards that seven day period 
Into the longer range then, we're looking at the Atlantic first of all and looking towards the Western Atlantic with those two systems still limping on. Really GFS not showing a good account of them to be honest. But then another system forming in the Western Caribbean. First one to really take advantage of that oceanic heat content and developing off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula uh, and could become a strong tropical storm or maybe a hurricane. That is in 10 days time though. So still a large uncertainty about where that system may track if indeed it it does form at all. Now you may have noticed something on the edge of the screen there and that's an Eastern Pacific system which is probably the reason why that Atlantic one was stalling there off the coast and that's because this one gets in the way and it becomes a substantial hurricane as well another significant impact along the coast of Mexico straight on the back of Hillary uh, within that 10 day period let's see what date is that landfall uh, strengthens very rapidly a short life there becomes probably a category 2 uh, and that's a landfall probably on the 26th of August it cut off prematurely there Western Pacific remaining fairly quiet but we do get one or two systems on the way um, hope is probably decreasing for that northern one but certainly that south china sea system becomes a substantial storm there as it continues westwards off the coast of china and then towards hainan and maybe into the gulf of tonkin also another system off to the east there out in the open ocean uh, could become a brief pulsing tropical storm uh, as it continues northwestwards sort of a similar uh, position to where dora was Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where we have all of our usual items including full season and individual storm animations and the surviving stock of Hone t-shirts that we are still waiting for to form. Into the silly range then, looking at this Atlantic Eastern Pacific combo of storms now uh, and this potential hurricane landfall eventually tracks down into Belize and uh, what's left of it, large influence there, lots of wind and rain and it looks like the center just about emerges back into the Bay of Campeche for a brief time, maybe another system forming off the back of that off the western coast of Mexico. So a very complicated scenario going on there in the extreme long range, I wouldn't give it much thought just yet at all really. Uh, but certainly something to think about as we progress further into the month. Uh, we do expect that things are really about to start warming up in the Atlantic. And in the Western Pacific then, looking at that first system in, uh, in the South China Sea into the Gulf of Tonkin, it stalls there for a little bit, gains some intensity, Category 1 maybe, and some really broad systems out east and maybe one or two further systems forming well to the east there near the international dateline. Uh, so it really is quite interesting where all of these storms are forming at the moment and the Central Pacific appears to be having a bit of a purple patch despite it not having a named storm to call its own at this stage. So that's the West Pack. Force 13's Eastern Tour is on its way in about three weeks' time. I'll be in Athens, Singapore, Cebu and Hong Kong. If you want to make a date with us, you can send us a message, contact at force13.com by email or through any of our social platforms and we'll pick it up. You can also chat online on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with over 3,500 weather watchers from around the world. Well, on this day in 1983, Alicia was on its way to reaching its Category 3 peak, and what a fantastic radar appearance it had there before its landfall in Texas. Made landfall on the 18th, but we're showcasing it today, um, and it peaked with winds of around 120 miles per hour. What was a phenomenal typhoon, Abbey, peaked as a strong Category 5, but it was well on its way out grazing the coast of Japan as a fading tropical storm on this day as well, 40 years ago to the day. Alicia, of course, was retired. Back to today then, we are code orange, and the next name on this season's Atlantic naming list is Emily. In the Eastern Pacific now, it's Irwin. And in the Central Pacific, the next name still, no surprises, you'd probably make AI voice recording out of this now it's Hone would you believe it in the Western Pacific our next name is Seola and in the North Indian Ocean it is still Tej it's been a little while since we had a North Indian Ocean storm 
but I'm sure we'll see one soon. 39 to the year's tally so far, well on its way towards getting towards that average number. The Australian region, Jasper's next up, Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and the South Pacific's next name is Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.